Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 10th April 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. This is Cambridge O Levels of Physics, and the code of the subject is 5054. Today, we have set our hearts to solve uh, an ATP paper. Uh, we call it Alternative to Practical. We also call it paper four. Today we have selected October, November 2015 for two paper. This paper, this ATP paper, belongs from the zone two or the variant two. So let's start today's paper. So here we go. October, November 2015 for two paper. The time allowed for this paper is one hour, and the total marks for this paper are thirty minutes. A student performs an experiment to obtain an accurate value for the focal length of a converging lens. His school has lenses with the focal length ten centimeter and fifteen centimeter. The student is given a lens from a packet labeled focal length 10 cm. Describe a simple method the student can use in order to check that the lens has a focal length of 10 cm. You may use a diagram in your answer. So dear students uh, this is an experiment in which we have to estimate the focal length of a convex lens or a converging lens. and the simple method is very simple you see you go into a room uh, in which we have a window in the wall so the wall which is opposite to the window open that window switch off all the lights of that room and go to the wall which is opposite to the uh, that window and on that wall put a rule 1 meter rule Uh, perpendicular to that wall approximately at, at the level of the window and put your convex lens on that uh, uh, rule and move that convex lens forward backward until you get a clear and sharp image of that window on the wall behind the rule so check what is the distance between the wall and the lens when a sharp image of the opposite window is formed on that wall so the distance between the convex lens and that wall will be equals to the focal length of that converging lens uh, i have made a video on this and i will put the link of that video in the description of this uh, lecture also or if you go to the my channel and you go into the playlist which is by the name of the atp papers paper 4 this win, this this experiment is in that list you can find that estimation of the focal length of a converging lens so i hope uh, you have understood let me show you my written answer so here you can see i have tried to make uh, this is a wall and uh, this is that wall which has a window in it and opposite to this wall i have put a scale rule which is perpendicular to the wall and is approximately at the same level as that window is put a lens here move this lens forward backward until you get a sharp image of this window on this wall so the distance between the wall and the lens at that moment will be equals to the focal length in a room place a meter rule perpendicular to a wall which has a window in the opposite wall move converging lens on the rule until sharp image of window is formed on the wall the distance between the lens and the wall is f so the distance between this wall and this lens will be equal to the focal length so i hope you understand so let's check the marking scheme 
So the marking scheme for the question number one, a part is showing up use of distant object and screen. Okay, the next, next part. The student then uses the apparatus in the figure 1.1 to obtain an accurate value for the focal length of the lens. So this is a meter rule. These are stands. Here we have a screen. Here we have a stand for the lens, convex lens. Here we have a, <clears throat> a cardboard and in which we have, uh, this is a cross here. And here I will put a light. So this will act as an object. This is a lens and on the screen, we will have the image. The student places the lens, the lens a measured distance U from the illuminated object. Illuminated object means you have put a torch of light or a source of light here. He then adjusts the position of the screen until a clear focused image is seen on the screen. Then he moves this screen forward, backward, forward, backward until a clear image of this thing is formed on the screen. He measures the distance D from the object to the focused image on the screen. D is the distance from this object to this screen. And U is the object, that U is the distance between this lens and this, and this object. From the object to the focused image on the screen. On the figure 1.1, mark and label the length U and the D. So let me show you. This is the first part. So here you can see U is the distance between the object and the lens, and the D is the distance between the object and the screen. So let's check the marking scheme. U marked correctly, D marked correctly. Okay. The distance U is set at 85 centimeter and the student measures the distance D. He repeats the experiment and obtains the following values in centimeter for D. Uh, it's 96.5, 96.3, 96.2, 96.1. 96.2. Calculate the D average, the average value of the D. Give your answer to three significant figures. Okay. So you want to find the D average, so simply add the values given and whatever the sum will be, you just divide it with the five. So you will get D average. Let me show you. So add the five values. Divided with the five, the, the sum should be divided with the five, and you will get 96.3 centimeters. Then the question is state one way in which the student can measure the each measurement of the D is accurate. You see, whenever you read the position of any object on a scale, your line of sight, your line of sight must be perpendicular to the scale to that location from where you are going to read the measurement. So your line of sight must be perpendicular to the scale. So by doing this, you will avoid the parallax error and your readings will be more accurate. So that is our answer. So you see this answer is right. Avoid parallax error. Be perpendicular and close to each other. Use dark and room. Check for zero error clamp. Sharp image found object and lens same height. Object and lens and the screen perpendicular to the right. The, they should be perpendicular, not inclined. Okay, not tilted. They should be perpendicular to the bench. So I hope you understand. I have a little problem with my throat today. Okay, then 96.3 was our average. 
the student repeats the experiment for a range of values of u and obtains a value of the average each time. The results are recorded in the figure 1.2. So when the u was 85, what was the d average? 96.3. So just enter that value here. That was the question on figure 1.2, add your value of the d average for u equals to 85 centimeter from the b second. So what was the answer here? Just add it here. Okay. Then, on the figure 1.3, plot the graph of D average on the Y axis against the U centimeter on the X axis. Start your axis from 0, 30. So here is that graph. So this is that graph which we have to draw. And the D will be taken on the Y axis and the U will be taken on the X axis. So this is that graph, okay? And it's a four mark question. And this is that table which we are going to use. So let me show you. Okay. So you can see we have filled 96.3 centimeter. And I will use this table. So this is X axis, this is Y axis. So at 12, 69, at 15, 45. Okay. At uh, 18, 40.5. Okay. And at uh, 25, 41.6. And at 50, 62. And 70, 81. And at 85, 96.3. So then join them with free hand curve. Okay. You can see here I have placed, uh, I have labeled the axis. This here we have D average in centimeters. And here you have U in centimeters 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I hope you understand. Okay, now uh, look at the marking scheme. Okay, so the marks are axis, correct, way, round, labeled quantity and unit, scale, linear, sensible, points plotted accurately within one by two small square, neat crosses or small points in circle, Best fit smooth curve drawn. Okay, then we have the next questions. Okay, we are done with this. Okay, the next question is use your graph to find the minimum value of the D average and UM the value of the U when the D is minimum. Okay, so the minimum value of the D. The minimum value of the D is this, this one. This is, I think, 39, 39.5, 39. And what is the U value at that moment? That is, I think, 20.5 or 21. Yeah. So 39 is the D average minimum value and 21 is the U value at that point. Theory shows that the minimum value for the D average is when D average is equals to 4F. So if you bring four to this side, it will be D average by four equals to the focal length. And when UM is equals to 2F, so F will be equals to U by two. Calculate the D by four, from here you get the focal length. And U by two, from here also you get the focal length. From the values you have given in the C third part, comment on your answers. So let's see. Okay, so I put the values of the D average and the divided with the four, you get 9.75, which is approximately 10. And U by two equals to F and F will be equals to 21 by two and that will be 10 point. This is also approximately F. So both values of F are close to each other. So they agree with each other. They give the same value almost. So let's check the marking scheme.
both values of f correctly calculated and sensible command they are close to each other yes so we are on the question number 2 This is a group of students is asked to determine the diameter of a large inflatable beach ball. A student uses a long piece of string to find the circumference of the ball. He then calculates the diameter. Figure two point one shows the students with the beach ball. So just one practical difficulty in measuring the circumference of the ball. You see, the circumference. is difficult to measure in this way with the help of a string the reason is this is a inflatable beach ball and you know when you will try to tight the string the ball will squeeze a little so its circumference will change plus the ball is not stable and to exactly uh, pinpoint the location where there is a maximum circumference that's a difficult thing so let me show you my answer and then we will check what the marking scheme says to measure accurately when student will stretch the string or he will pull the string or he will tighten the string ball will squeeze due to which diameter will not be accurate because the ball the diameter will change so let's have a look at the marking scheme pulling string tight and squashing ball squashing ball ball will, will not spherical sensible command about marking string holding string straight taught to measure the length so our answer is right describe a different method uh, that another student may use to measure directly the diameter of the beach ball you may include a diagram in your your answer so what we do we take two wooden blocks and between the wooden blocks we put the ball and the wooden block should be touching the sides of the ball and then we use a scale and we measure what's the distance between the blocks and that is equals to the diameter of the okay so let me show you okay so you can see in the diagram i have used two wooden blocks and i have placed the ball beach ball between them both the wooden blocks are touching the ball so then i put a scale with them on the ground and check what is the distance between the uh, between the wooden blocks from here to here from a to b that will be equal to the diameter of the block so take two wooden blocks and place ball between them as shown put a scale on the floor mayer a b length this a and b length repeat by changing the location of the ball calculate the average of the ab and that is the diameter let's have a look at the marks method mark ball placed between two planes practical detail mark use a rule tape to make so our answer is right so just two ways in which the student in the b first part can make the measurement of the diameter accurate so uh, one method is to change the location of the ball from where you measure the diameter and you take the average of the diameters different diameters you get and then that average will be your answer so that will make it more accurate so avoid the parallax parallax error when you are uh, reading the measurement so your line of sight must be perpendicular to the scale whenever you are measuring the diameter so to avoid the parallax error and then don't uh, for example we have put the ball between the two wooden blocks don't try to squeeze the ball god that ball is soft and it can be squeezed so just just the ball the walls of the wooden block should be touching not try to push them inward because that will change the shape of the ball avoid squashing of the ball okay so these are my answers okay so let's look at the marking scheme what the marking scheme has to say
any two from repeat and average how planes made parallel described not squashed ball avoid parallax in reading meter rule okay so what we have used uh for this answer he said not squashing of the ball avoid this thing i think the marking scheme says not squash ball okay so i also wrote that not squash the ball okay so that's right our answers are right okay so we are going to the next question the length of a school laboratory is between 5 meter and 6 meter three students a b and c are asked to measure the length of the laboratory the student a is given two meter rules describe how he can use these to measure the length of the laboratory so uh, you see very simple uh, he can uh, you see the opposite wall you want to measure the distance between the opposite wall so you will put the meter rule on the wall number for example on the one wall on the floor touching one wall on the floor and where that rule ends you put the second rule uh, in such a way that is coinciding with the end of that first rule and then you pick up the first rule and you place it uh, uh, after the second rule where the second rule ends you put the first rule again and and you keep on doing this until you reach the other wall so let me show you my answer my answer was little i i because when i wrote the answer i wrote it with the sense of the one one rule okay put rule beside the wall on the floor mark the position of the end of the rule on the floor with a chalk move the rule beyond this point the back end should be the back end of the rule should be on the mark bring rule to the opposite side of the wall by this method so keep on doing this process my my wording is not good uh, keep on doing this process until you have reached the opposite wall and that this is how you can measure uh, the length this wording is not that good uh, which should be i think that's not of that good meter rule laid end to end from one ball to the other can accept from a diagram okay so you can make also a diagram okay so let's go to the next part student b is given a 10 meter flexible tape as shown in the figure 3.1 describe how he can use the tape to measure the length of the laboratory so if you want to measure the length of the laboratory uh, the one ball's length so what you will do you will place the this starting point of the of the of this uh, flexible tape against one wall and then you will unroll it and you will take this to the opposite wall and the tape should be on the floor and there should be no sag and no there should be no bends in the okay so very simple this is how you measure the length place one end of the tape on one wall and the other end on the opposite wall tape should be tight it should not have sags or bends one end fixed against wall however expressed and measured to the opposite wall the other side okay then The student C is given electronic measuring device as shown in the figure 3.2. The manufacturer claims that the device is accurate to 0.5 millimeter and has a range of 60 meter. Okay, 0.5 millimeter. Okay. The device emits pulses of laser light, light that reflects from the opposite wall of the laboratory. and it turns back to the device it measures the time taken for a pulse to return the device calculates the distance to the wall using the time taken for the pulse to return so this is a laser and with the help of laser you can measure uh, the distance between the instrument and any other object okay so uh, state one piece of additional information needed by the device to calculate his speed if the if this device note down how much time the laser took to go there and come back to 
to actually measure the distance between the machine and that wall. Another thing which is required is the speed of the laser in the air. So there's a reason why the device uses visible light rather than infrared radiation. The, the visible light is better. The reason is that you should know that your laser is pointed on what object, okay? So from where the light will be reflected, you know from which object or from which surface the laser is being reflected. So you can point it directly where you want it, whose distance you want to find. Describe how student C uses the device to measure the length of the laboratory. So he will point the laser onto the opposite wall and the gun will tell you how much time the laser took to go there and come back. And then you multiply it with the speed of the laser in the air and you divide it with the two. You will get the distance between uh, the point where you're standing and the wall. Then he says, suggest one disadvantage, disadvantage of using uh, the electronic measuring device. You see, when you use electronic measuring devices, uh, the one big issue with them is that you have to, because they use uh, cells, batteries, so often you have to replace those batteries because they will run out. Okay, so let me show you my answers. Speed of laser in there so that you can see the uh, the the, uh, the wall from which surface it is reflecting off. He placed the device on one wall and directed towards the opposite wall. Yeah, this is the method of using that machine. So that's one disadvantage of using electronic measuring device. It uses the batteries which we have to replace frequently, okay? So you place the device on one wall, direct it towards the other wall, and the machine will automatically tell you the, I, I told you the process, the whole process, why should it be, how that machine will give you the distance, okay. Marking scheme. Speed of light, length of device, position of laser, detector within the device. You can see what it is reflecting off. You can see it. Infrared cannot be seen, is not colored to make sure it is horizontal level. To place it touching wall and pointing at opposite wall. Expensive, uses batteries. Batteries run down, need recharging. Needs clear line of sight. Other objects might get in the way. Laser hazard with the eyes. Some surfaces may not reflect the light. Okay, so next question is question number four. A student is asked to determine the resistance R of a resistor. The student is provided with the following apparatus. The resistor with unknown resistance R, four 1.5 volt cells, an ammeter, a voltmeter connecting leads. The student uses one of the 1.5 volt cells in the circuit to determine the value of the resistance R. In the space below, draw the circuit diagram. So, I have made this diagram, and but there is a problem in this diagram I can show you. Uh, let's correct it. Let's correct it. Uh, I made a mistake here. I have put all the four cells here. He asked us to only put one cell. Okay. So here we have a mistake. Let me correct it. So uh, I have made that correction uh, because when I was working, I just made, I was thinking differently. So, but now you see, he said only use one cell. So in the diagram, we have to use only one cell. So I have shown now only one cell. Hope you understand.
Okay, the next. Circuit containing one cell and resistor with ammeter in series, voltmeter in parallel with resistors. Okay, it is. Okay. And done with this. It's a two marks question. He says the, the ammeter has a one red terminal and one black terminal. The red terminal is marked positive. Explain why the terminals of the ammeter are different colors. You see, uh, this makes uh, the connection easier because you don't have to look for the positive mark or a negative mark by just the color. And we know that the, where, where the ammeter has red terminal, there you have to put the positive terminal of the battery. You have to connect it with the positive terminal of the battery. So this makes connections uh, of the ammeter in the circuit very easy. So that everyone can act it the right way around. Okay. So marking scheme. It matters which way around it is connected, so you can connect it the right way around. Okay. On your circuit diagram in the A label with the letter B, the black terminal of the ammeter. And the the black one is which is connected with the negative. So you see this, this is connected with the negative. So this is called B. This is what they have asked. Okay. Negative terminal level C ticket. Okay, C part is coming up, he says, The student has four 1.5 volt cells. In addition to 1.5 volt state, three other voltage that the student can use in her circuit. Okay, so let me show you. So if you connect them like this, four of them, it will give you six volt. If you connect them like this, two in series with each other, but this and this parallel to each other. So th this combination will have EMF three volt. If you connect them like this, two series with each other and with this in series, these are parallel to this. So I have used four cells and here the EMF will be 4.5 volt. So you can get six volt, you can get three volt, you can get 4.5 volt. And I have made the diagrams to make you understand that's how this is done. Three, four point five, and six volt. Okay, then the question is: draw the arrangement of the cell that produces the largest voltage. Largest voltage will be when you connect all the four in series with each other. Okay, so you can see here I have connected the four cells in series with each other. So the EMF of this whole combination will be six volts. Okay. It says the student repeats their ex her experiment using the largest voltage. State and explain whether this produces a different value for the resistance R. You see, because the resistor we are using is a fixed resistor, so when you will increase the voltage, the current flowing through that resistor will also increase. So the ratio of the voltage and the current, which is equal to resistance, will remain constant. So there will be no change in the resistance because the voltage and the current, resistance is the ratio of the voltage and the current. If you increase the voltage, the current will also increase. So that ratio will remain constant because we are using a fixed resistor. No, as voltage increases, current will also increase. R is equal to V by I. This ratio will remain constant. So let me check the marking scheme. No change, same value and resistance independent of the voltage depends only on the resistor. Resistance increases and resistor becomes R. Our answer is this one. Okay. So our answer is right. So, uh, my dear students, today we have done October, November 2015, uh, Physics 50544 paper. This was 
ATP paper from the zone two. And I have tried my best to explain you, and I have also tried to uh, explain you the mistakes which I made in that paper while writing. So I hope you understand that what mistakes can happen. So uh, keep striving. We have few days left in the Cambridge exam. So keep preparing your paper two and the paper four because uh, in the paper one of the physics is in June. So our advice to all the students is prepare only the paper two and the paper four. And the paper one, uh, we will prepare again when you will enter the June. So after your mathematics exam. So if you find this video interesting and helpful to you, if you think this has helped you uh, to do the past paper by sitting in your home, like this video, subscribe my channel, share the link of this video onto your Facebook accounts and onto your Instagram accounts and onto your Twitter accounts, because that will help me promote my channel. And that is uh, a motivational thing for me. I think that is a great blessing for me that I am able to make these videos and um, make some students' life easier without spending any money. They can do a very good practice of past papers of the physics. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. God bless you all.